Hello, it's Herbie again, and um, today we're going to do a little bit of chain maintenance. Uh, we're going to do a cleaning of the chain, uh, removal of it, show you a couple little things about it. You know, if you were going to order a new chain, how to know how many links that you have that you need, and how to properly tighten it. So, this is going to be all unedited. It's going to be However you see it is how it went. So let's get started. First thing you need to do is you need to take your rear seat off. And on these KPR 200s, uh, if you push in and turn right, it opens up the helmet lock. But if you push in and turn, or if you leave it out and turn left, it unlocks this rear seat. And it comes off. I don't know if I showed you this or not, but this is how I have my bag attached. It's just strapped on. Works out real well. So I'll set that aside. And then you'll need an eight millimeter to take off the front part of the seat. There's two bolts. That's all it is. And then we're going to need to take this panel right here off. And this has a screw way up under here, the Phillips head. And then there's another, whoop, there's another Phillips head back here. And I wanted to show you that these two screws are different. One's like a sheet metal screw and the other's like a uh, machine screw. The sheet metal looking screw goes towards the engine. And then there's an eight millimeter head bolt in here you have to remove. And then there's a little pop tab you got to pull out. And then there's a couple hooks on here. And you have to pull it forward to get those hooks out. You can see them right here. They go down in a couple of slots right there and just tuck in. And I'll show you those slots. One right here, and there's one right there. That's where those tabs go down into. And then the reason why we have to take that off here, let me set you down over here, get a little bit closer, a little bit better view. The reason we have to take all that off is so we can take this front panel off right here. And it's an eight millimeter as well. There's two bolts on here. If you didn't take this panel off, the seat and all this stuff off, you wouldn't be able to get this out because it hits on that panel that I had just taken off. So you have to take that off as well. Okay. And if you ever wanted to change this front sprocket to a different size, uh, it's pretty easy to do, it's just two bolts right there. I can show you that later if you'd like. And then the next thing to do is to take this chain guard off. These are 10 millimeter. And there's two of those. And this has a, a, a little notch that it sits in, so you have to push it forward 
or is it backward? Backward. You have to push it back for it to come out. It slides on this right here. And then there's a little uh, piece of metal that it slides into in there. Okay. Well, the next thing we need to do is we need to clean the chain. My weapon of choice, WD-40. It does a pretty good job of cleaning. Coat it real good. Put the brush on there. Brush it real good. And then get the undersides here. Yeah, if you do that, you just wipe it off. Be careful, don't get your fingers stuck in here. And just wipe it off good. You're not going to get it perfect, but you want to get it much, much as much of the big stuff off as possible. Okay, then you look for the master link. Just spin it around until it comes on the rear sprocket. I don't know if you can see that or not. There it is right here. Okay, for the master link on this one, it's just a clip style. So you just put your pliers on the back part of that clip and the front part of the pin and squeeze your pliers to make it snap out of that pin in the back. And this just lifts off. If you can see this or not, I don't know. It's got a bigger section at the bottom than the top. So it'll slide on the bottom and then you slide it down to snap it in. And then there's a plate that comes off as well. It just pops off. And then you can push out your master link. Then the chain comes off. My chain's still in good shape because it's fairly new and it's an RK made in Japan chain. Pretty good shape. Okay, now in order for you to order, <clears throat> excuse me, to order another chain, you have to know how many links you're going to need. All you have to do is count the rollers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and so on. You get all the way down to the end. And this one was a 130 link chain. And I took one link out of it, so it's 129 links. And I have a 16 tooth front sprocket. So it comes stock, comes standard with a 15 tooth. So I would say that probably a a 128 length chain link would probably be the best for a stock bike, stock gearing on it. 
And when you take this chain off, try to keep it in the same direction. You took it off like this, you want to put it back on like this. You don't want to reverse it and run it the other way. Put it back on the way you took it off. If you get a new chain, it doesn't really matter. You can put it on either direction, but once you put it on a certain way, just leave it that way. You're better off. Okay. Next. We're going to loosen the adjusters. And it's got a lock nut on it. They're 13 millimeter. Loosen those up real good. Do the same on the other side. Okay. Now, in order to take and get some slack in your in your wheel you're going to need to loosen the axle nut the axle nut is a 21 millimeter and you can back it up on the other side with an 18 millimeter, if you need to. And you loosen it up, get a little bit of slack in your swing arm. You don't have to take it all the way off. And then you can bump it forward like that. And it runs those adjusters all the way in. Now it makes it easy to put the new chain on or put your old one on, whichever one you want to do. Okay, so now we'll put the chain back on and put it back on the same direction I took it off. And you always want to put the master link together while it's on the sprocket. It makes it a lot easier. You take your master link, just slide it through the holes like that. Oh, before I do that, I want to show you this. On this master link, it's got a couple of notches in it. I don't know if you could see that or not, but it's got notches in it. That's what holds that clip on. You got to make sure you have that in correctly. I'll show you a little bit of that here in a second. So you slide that in. Then you put your outer plate on it. Make sure that's in all the way. And then you put your clip on. You always put the clip with the closed end going towards the machine because you're riding this way, traveling, the wheels traveling this direction. So you want the closed end going that way. So you put it down at the bottom on that opening and then, and then turn it and slide it just a little bit to where it clips into that just a little bit. And then Take your pliers and you snap it in just like that. And you got to make sure that that is snapped in good. This is very critical to do. Want to make sure that this isn't spread at all. Want to make sure that it's in the groove and that it won't come out. Okay, that one's done properly. It's in there right. And see how the closed end's heading this way. 
the open ends face in that direction. Okay, so now we need to take the slack out of it. To take the slack out of it, <clears throat> you just pull it back a little bit, line these plates right here up, and by hand just snug this up and do the same on the other side. Okay. Now you can see it's got a lot of slack in it still. So take your 13 millimeter and you watch this right here. Whoops, sorry about that. And tighten this up. Now what's going to happen as I tighten this up, more than likely it's going to tighten this chain just a little bit. So be careful about that. Don't tighten this all the way up yet. Just get it snug pretty, pretty good. And then take your adjusters and put tension on them like that. You want to make sure that those adjusters between here and here are snug. You don't want any slack or that can go forward and cause slack in your chain on you. You don't want that. So you do that on both sides. And if your chain feels just a little bit loose, since this isn't all the way tight, you can turn it just a little bit and it will still pull just a little bit, but just don't get it too tight. Okay. Then after you do that, you got your adjuster set where you, where you, want, where you like them and, and where it's centered. The next step is to make sure to double check your work to make sure it's centered. So you look up in here with the tire and the swing arm right here. Kind of hard to see, I'm not much of a cameraman, but the gap in between the tire and the swing arm right here is the same on that side as it is on this side. And it looks like it is. My adjusters are the same on this side as it is on this side. Okay, so now your adjusters are snug. Now it's time to torque down your nut on your axle. Take a torque wrench, set it for 55 foot pounds. I'll go over here and where I could see and set my torque wrench. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 5, 55 foot pounds. Okay, and you take your 21 millimeter socket, put it on there, and torque it. Okay, I normally put blue Loctite on my axle and it keeps it there pretty good. So I don't redo it every time, but I do make sure that it's got some on there. So you can see the slack in it now. It should be about uh, between quarter and half inch slack. And that's what I have. 
So that's really good. So then now you need to tighten up your jam nuts. so that they don't come loose. And those two checks that I showed you right here on the axle and in the swing arm is the best things to go by. Don't go by the bolt length from this side to this side because a lot of times that'll throw you off. Okay, so we got that all done. Now, you're really supposed to do this stuff after you've been riding a little while and the chain's warmed up. But for the sake of the video, I use this. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can put on your chain from gear oil to any, just all kinds of different things. This is what I like to use. I just don't use a lot of it. And that's all I need. And your wheels should spin freely when you're done. Should have some slack in it. Not a lot, but a little bit. And your wheels should roll freely. Which mine does. Okay, so the axle's torqued down. Everything's tight, clips on right, chains grease. Now it's time to start putting things back together. This part right here is really kind of a pain in the booty. It's trying to line this tab here up inside there. And you'll see what I mean when you go to do this. I mean, it, you could do it, it's not that hard. I mean, it's just it takes several tries for me to get it in there. There we go. Put your bolts back in. Okay, then you put your front cover on. Oh, I was going to show you this real quick. If you ever wanted to change that front counter shaft sprocket right here, all you have to do is take these bolts out, two 10 millimeter bolts. Don't put it in gear to hold this from turning. You could put something in here in the wheel, or you can just put your foot under the wheel, hold, hold the wheel or something. Or you could put something in between here to block it so that the wheel won't turn. But do not put it in gear and use pressure against that. But you take these two bolts out, after the chain's off, you turn this just a little bit and it'll slide off. Then you just slide your counter shaft sprocket off, slide a new one on, and you put this clip over it, slide it on, then turn it until the bolt holes line up. Put some blue Loctite on the bolts and put those in there. Pretty easy job. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and put this on.
No kidoki. Now the rest of this is pretty much a piece of cake, what I'll show you. Got to wipe the sweat off me. I left the fan off this time because last time it made so much noise. Now you can see there's a push pin tab on here that has to go in as well as these two little hooks. So you line those hooks up down into the slot. like that, and you push it back towards the rear, then pop this in, and then you take your screws, bolt, and everything. Remember the sheet metal looking one goes towards the front, towards the engine. Don't tighten it completely yet. Okay, now let's have all three in. Go ahead and crank it up. Crank it tight. Okay. So. Oh. I'll put you back up here. And then you have to put front seat on. It's got two little hooks that have to go up underneath here. So you put those in first and then slide it forward and it drops right down into place. And put your two bolts in. Okay, that's all done. And then this has got two hooks on it as well. They have to slide in to a couple of eyes in here. Sometimes this is a little bit tricky. But you gotta get it where it sits in there good and then give it a, a good smash. Now it's down in there. Okay, well, let's see. All right, well, that completes the chain maintenance. Uh, everything went well, pretty well, except for me dropping the camera. Uh, I hope you learned something. I hope it helps you. And um, this morning, I want to mention this. This morning, I took the bike out. Because I wanted to do a top speed run with acceleration video. And I mounted my iPhone onto here instead of using my action camera because I got this new Bluetooth mic and I thought, well, maybe it would work better. Well, it got all vibrating in the screen. It's hard to see. I mean, I could post it up, but I got up to 85 miles per hour today. And I mean, I don't know if because it was cooler, it was raining. I'm not sure. It's on the same road I always go on. And it's flat, 85 miles an hour top speed. It was six gear redlining at like 9,300 RPM, something like that. And uh, it was holding 
80 to 82 for the most part. I didn't stay on the interstate long. I was on there maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. And uh, it did really, really good today. I'm going to try to get another video using my action camera, hopefully maybe record some of that because for me, I'm excited about it because for a 200cc motorcycle, this KPR, uh, Life and KPR bike is amazing. Uh, it's fun to ride. Man, the engines for 200 cc. I gotta. I keep emphasizing that because it's only 200 cc. Only has like 17 horsepower. But it's surprising. Like I was on the, when I was on the interstate, I got behind a tractor trailer. I was doing 82 or 83. I had to slow down because the tractor trailer, according to my speedometer, was doing 75. So I thought, well, I'll go ahead and pass him. I had plenty of room around me. So I opened the throttle up and you can hear the engine rev up from 75 miles per hour. And I went around and passed him. And once I got in front of him, I was doing 83. So it, it took a little bit to get there. But anyway, I just wanted to mention that maybe that'll be coming up in the future. So, okay. Thanks for watching.